This was definitely a bit of a pleasant surprise, as I had really no idea what this game was when I first bought it. Uh, it's called Valkyrie no Boken. I, I think it's how it's pronounced. And I just saw the, the cool Valkyrie on the label art, along with what suspiciously looked like a Zelda-like game screen there on the label. And I, I knew I had to have this thing. And it was certainly cheap enough. It was no problem. And as it turns out, the Zelda impression it was, was valid, though. It's important to point out that this game came out in 1986. Um, so as we kind of explored before, the 2600 game adventure sort of kicked off the whole RPG genre on consoles, uh, especially for, you know, like action RPGs. Um, Namco's Tower of Draga became a formative influence on that first Zelda title, which pretty firmly established just how an action RPG should work. Uh, even though it's considered an odd duck now, um, the second Zelda game leaned even harder on those traditional RPG elements like, you know, experienced point-based leveling systems and magic, you know, that kind of thing. And this is kind of what makes Valkyrie no Boken remarkable, as it touches on a lot of what Zelda managed to figure out, but just kind of falls a bit short on execution, leaving it kind of more or less forgotten. Of course, like Tower of Draga, it also never came to North America either, so... Um, it did get an arcade sequel, I think, uh, which also landed on the PC Engine, but as a franchise in, in total, it, it's remained somewhat obscure in uh, Namco's catalog. Uh, interestingly, though, the Valkyrie does appear uh, in the Project X Zone games on 3DS, which I'm guessing might be the very first official appearance of the character in the West, if you don't count you know, the Soul Calibur skins. Well, I think the best thing to do now is just get into the game, and you can see for yourself just how close this came to getting the Zelda formula right. Okay, here we are. Valkyrie no Boken, the something of time key something, I think. Ooh, sorry, my Japanese is not so good. So you go to start. When you start a character, it wants you to choose your zodiac sign, uh, your blood type, and those two things will determine like your general, uh, like a, like your strength, magic, luck. Like there's a, a, a series of hidden stats. But this will determine what you start with. But you can start your whatever color you want to start your color your character with. I don't think that affects anything. But um, yeah, so I'll start with Fireball and Magic. Oh, smoke these guys. You only have so much magic though, so I can't shoot these guys forever. And uh, yeah, so actually, since this is an RPG, an action RPG, you get experience points and money and, and gear. So I'm going to skip ahead to the password screen. I'll show you my current character in progress. And so let's do that now. Okay, here we are. I got the password entered. Uh, a little bit shorter than Metroid's. Um, and we'll get going here. Here we are at the place. Now, here's the problem right away. I'll show you. You can see how it keeps my experience points. 66,000 some odd. My gold, 740. And it does keep track of my abilities. Got my healing, fireball, etc. But it doesn't keep track of my gear. So I have to go get all my gear again and spend that money and do the thing. So my first goal right now is to go get the um, get the boat because I need to get to the next continent. So that's my next goal right now is to get the boat. And then we're going to go get my helmet. And then we're going to the next continent. And as usual, I'm Keeping my fingers crossed that this all comes out okay on video. Those guys are jerks, huh? All right, here we go. The big bad guy. Oh, getting cream there. I think I got too close to him. I was letting him do physical damage to me. Okay, there we go. Got the key. And there is the chest. So we're in the pause menu with the cursor to the key. And there we go. And then I got my boat. And the music triumphant. Now I got to get to the pier to get onto the ocean. You sort of notice how the enemies sort of appear on the screen, kind of like they do in uh, Zelda 2, but this came out quite some time before then. Just a couple year, a year or two, right? Oh, I'm really getting uh, smacked here. Which is a shame, because I'm pretty leveled up, but... Uh, like I said I lost all my gear, so... Okay, let's get on that ocean. So it's a bit of a trip, but now I'm going to go get that helmet. I wish you moved a little bit faster if there's a run button, but no such luck. And I definitely do want that helmet. But once I get it, I'm not necessarily going to wear it right away. I'm going to wait till I get to the uh, next continent and get safely onto the uh, into the inn. Yeah, so in your boat, you still can attack just like you would if you're on land. It just doesn't 
give you a graphic. Oh, and there's one of the warp gates that I can't use yet, I don't think. It won't do anything. Oh, and there's also a day-night cycle. You just notice how the light changes. It's gone into darkness. Yeah, so there's a whole day-night cycle that changes the enemies that you'll face uh, on the overworld. Oh, come on, no, what are you doing? These guys shouldn't be that bad to... Now we're getting to the daylight again. Just like before, key, and there's my helmet, which I'm going to put on just a little bit later. So I'm going to mosey on over to the uh, next continent, which initially won't look a lot different from this continent, but uh, there's a desert over there. Because I think one of the first main goals is to get into this pyramid. Like I said, you sort of have to move. Well, in my case, I just sort of look up an FAQ for the most part, because it doesn't there are no townspeople to talk to, really. There's not a lot of story, as far as I can tell. That's one of the main differences between this and uh, other action RPGs. It's definitely mostly an action game, but it just gives you stuff in the environment to figure out for yourself. It's pretty tough that way. And the other thing it does is kind of tough. It's just the, some of the enemies it throws at you can be above what you expect in terms of level. Like, see how much damage that fireball did to me? Keep it going, going, going. We're almost there. This game will get exciting any minute now, I promise. <laughs> well, maybe not, but we'll see. All right, back on land. Let's get to that. Uh... Well, you can get an axe to cut down these trees at, uh, at the store, too. Because there's definitely some items that'll be behind trees and stuff, and pathways that you can cut through. Oh, these guys suck. These guys totally suck. And so do these guys, actually. I really need that big sword sooner rather than later. We're almost there. There's the river. I know where I am now. And there's the inn. Let's just take care of this guy. And I'm getting, we're in the inn. Actually, I'm going to heal before I do this just to save myself some money. Because you pay to get healed, so... Oh, you see I'm running out of magic. There's only so much magic points you have. Like you can see on my stats, I'm down to 28 magic points out of 148. So I can't heal myself anymore. But once I get into bed... Totally healed. And you notice that the, the password changed in real time as well. Um, and it's tough. 120,000 to get to the next level. That's a, that's a lot. Okay, now we get to the store. And I'm going to sell one of these keys because I don't need two keys. So we're going to sell a key. Oh, what, no, get out of there. Don't want to accidentally sell anything else. So I definitely want the sword. I want the mantle. And I'll take a lantern for the dungeon. And I'll, t I'll take an axe too. So that's completely geared up. So I'm going to wear the mantle. I'm going to wear the helmet. And I'm going to equip the big sword. Now I'm definitely a Valkyrie. In pink. Let's take care of this doofus. There we go. I don't, well, I can always just sell the extra key, right? Oh, I got poisoned. Hold on, I got a healing spell right there. Oh no, that's invincibility or something. That's not the healing. What is it? Is it this one? No, it's not doing anything. I gotta get home. I'm gonna die if I don't get home. I don't have a healing potion. I wasn't expecting this to happen. I very rarely ever get poisoned. Okay, if I get into bed, I think I should be okay. Yeah, okay, good. Whew. Good night to rest. Clear any poison, apparently. Okay, let's just get to this dungeon so I can close out this look. So I can show you something different than just the overworld. Okay, there's the dungeon. Let's get in there. And you notice it's dark, so we will light the lantern. And these enemies are tough. Like, I probably shouldn't really be here, but I wanted to at least show another part of the game off. And it's uh, got to find a, a stairway to get out of here. I, I'm not even sure what the item that's in here that you need. Like, you do get items and stuff. I just... Uh, I don't know what it is, though. Yeah, this is... Um, can I use the key? Yes, I use the key. And there is a sword of some kind. And I think I just drowned to death. <laughs> okay. Well, there, there I'm going to Valhalla. All right, that was Valkyrie no Bokken. Let's bounce out of this and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, that was Valkyrie No Boken, a tragically flawed game, but super interesting and definitely actually one of my favorite cards on my collection at this point. Um, 
Uh, thanks a lot for watching and hopefully I'll catch you next time.